In Module 2, we are going to discuss some of the foundations of MDX. First, we have to understand the role of MDX, and then we get into the architecture of it. Like, talk about some of the, you know, basic rules that you have to be familiar with in order to refer to some of the MDX member names. And then we are going to explain calculated member builder. So you have to first be familiar with the tool in order to be able to create calculated members. And then at the end of this specific module, uh, I like to get it started with creating the first calculated member of this specific chapter. So as far as the role of an MDX, we like to talk about the background of it, see where does it come from, and then we understand two different functions of an MDX in here. MDX is a pseudo acronym for multidimensional expression. That's what it stands for, MDX. And then, of course, it was created in order to uh, find a specific information from multiple dimensions. MDX is not specific to analysis services. MDX can be used separately. If you don't have analysis services installed on your machine, you can still use MDX within your programs or custom applications, perhaps, in order to access an analysis services itself. It is part of OLADB for OLAB specification. In other words, even though you don't have analysis services, if you do have OLADB for OLAB, you can actually use MDX. There are other providers for MDX as well. Non-Microsoft technologies also take advantage of MDX itself. MDX uh, has many different flavors. Microsoft MDX is a set of basically some commands and functionality that uh, allows you to access the analysis services of Microsoft SQL Server. So Microsoft MDX is both subset and superset of OLADB for OLAP. If you wanted to understand the MDX, you have to see it in two different ways. Either you deal with MDX statements or you deal with expressions. MDX statements is very similar to SQL language, SQL statements. It is a query language for browsers similar to SQL query. And basically, there are some tools and third-party applications that allow you to create these uh, statements graphically. You could double-click on some items, part of your dimensions, use some functions in there, and basically go from there and create your own statements. Basically, the MDX statements return a complete report of values, very similar to the select statement. Versus MDX expressions. MDX expressions are very similar to the formulas that you are dealing with within Excel sheets, for example, or spreadsheets formulas. It, it is used to create calculated members, default members, and dimensions and cube properties. MDX expressions return a single value. So the difference between an expression and a statement is expression returns only one single value, a statement returns multiple values. On top of everything else, your MDX statement can use MDX expression internally, which we're going to get into it later on in other modules. Now, let's talk about some of the uh, rules and regulations that you have to fam be familiar with in order to get into the objects that are available within the cube. In the next few slides, we talk about bracketing object names, qualifying the member names, and learn how to create member names. And then at the end, we are going to evaluate different member names in there. As far as bracketing the object names, you have to consider that an OLAB object name must be bracketed if the following conditions come true. If you have a space on another special character part of the name, you have to enclose it part of the brackets. This is very similar to SQL ANSI. If it is the same as a keyword, also you need to use it within the uh, statement. For example, you might want to go with a member name which is a keyword, like select a statement. We don't recommend that, but just in case if your design has happened to use keywords, then you need to choose that. You need to place it within the brackets. If also it starts with numerical character, you have to bracket it. So there are three different conditions that you need to use brackets. Number one, if you use a special characters or a space, if you start with numerical value, or use the keyword. So far, it's very similar to ANSI of SQL statements. In order to qualify uh, the member names, well, you have to consider that the same name can appear in more than one place in the NoLab cube. So how do we qualify it? We have to always get back to the root of the hierarchy. So as you see here, in order to qualify the name, we could prevent ambiguity. For example, quarter one 
might be used in multiple levels, multiple dimensions perhaps. Quarter of one in multiple years can be, for example, 1998 quarter of one or 1999 quarter of one. If you don't specify the year before the quarter of one and you have more than one quarter of one, then you have ambiguity. By default, Analysis Services provides the quarter of one for the first level that you have created it. So if you don't specify the fully qualified name that way, you get the first quarter of one of the first level of your dimension. Or as another example, you might have West, which comes from two different dimensions, like West of region or West of sales rep. So again, the one that you have created first part of the dimension creation, it will be the default. So in order not to have that problem, you have to consider having the fully qualified name to be, you know, used by the time you're using the MDX. So as I discussed earlier, MDX uses the first occurrence. That means quarter of one, if you don't specify, for example, in this scenario, if you don't specify the year, it will default to 1998 because 1998 perhaps had been created first or West would be interpreted depending on which dimension appeared first in the cube editor. In this scenario, quarter of one, it goes with 1998 because this is a smaller number in comparison with 1999. But in the case of region and sales rep, just because they are character based, you go with the first one that has been created in your dimension. In order to create the member name, well, basically there's a simple process for it. Let's get into it. You have to enter a member name or a key value. As you know, like any other database uh, design concept, every single member has an ID. Well, basically, there is no exception here in analysis services. By the time you're creating a member, that member automatically gets an ID. Analysis services provide that ID to you. The way that you're creating them, they associate a numerical value with it. They call it the key. You could change that, if you will. You could actually make the key or a member name to be different. You could show one thing, but search by another thing. In other words, by the time you're designing your dimension, you could basically search by a, a specific field, like a product ID, but instead of showing the product ID, you could show the product name. Because if you consider a record, you have a pr um, primary key, and then you have some values. The way that you search among members basically goes with a specific key like relational database management system. But the way that you're presenting the data might be different. Maybe you would like to go with the product name, but show the product ID instead, for example. Also, as needed, you could precede the member with either the parent member, or with the level name, or with the dimension name. As needed, you could also precede the level with the dimension name, and basically that way you get the fully qualified value. Pay attention to this particular uh, slide. As you see, we have the time dimension. Part of the time dimension, we have the all level. All level includes all members within it. Then we, get, we have created like two different levels, 1997, 1998. On each level, we have sub-levels, quarter of one, two, three, and four. And then we have months. So if you think about it, the way that you're evaluating the member name, it will be as follows. As you see, we got the legitimate names in here. We got the time dimension, all level, 1998, quarter of one, and February. This is a legitimate name. The way you're referring to a member has to be fully qualified. Or perhaps 1998, quarter of one, February. It still is legitimate because all is abstract level and dimension automatically knows you're in that current dimension. Or you could go with all level means actually the one at the top which Microsoft automatically gives you and then 1998 quarter one in February. Or perhaps you could go with year 1998 quarter one February if you have another level that is not being shown in here. There are some pro pro uh, problematic names in here as you see like time that February. This is ambiguous. Like, for example, you don't know which February are we talking about. You have more than one. Well, by default, it goes to 1997 February, if you don't specify anything else. It's not an error, but it provides problem. Or, for example, 1998 months February. Well, that's a problem, because we don't have a month level. We have quarter. Or perhaps 
all 1998 quarter of one February. As you see, the all parentheses refers to the all available levels. You have to include the all also, like this one. And then, of course, you have the year 1998 quarter two February. The problem with that, as you see in here, is that you go with the year and you go with the quarter two February. February is not part of quarter two. It's part of quarter one. So these are prob prob problematic names that we are dealing with. Now, let's take a look at some of the tools that are available so we could create calculated member. I'd like to demonstrate calculated member builder so we can understand a little bit more, and then we learn how to access the calculated member builder, and then finally we learn how to deal with value expression box, icons that are available, and members in the data list. So in order to do this, I'd like to go and open up my analysis services in here, and basically on the market database that I've already exported it, uh, imported it actually part of this analysis services in here, I like to go and basically on the cube itself, uh, right click and open up the editor for the sales cube. Part of this particular sales cube, as you see, we don't have any calculated member. In order to get a hold of calculated member builder, you have to right click at it and say calculated member, new calculated member. You could also select this particular icon. It says insert calculated member. Or you could go from the menu and choose calculated member from the insert menu. So in either case, is automatically launching the calculated member builder. What I'd like to talk about in here, explain the entire uh, UI so you could be familiar with. As you see at the top region, we got three uh, specific uh, boxes. The first box talks about parent dimension. This is uh, specifying which dimension are you working with. By default, calculated member points to the measures. If you choose that, then part of the data in here, the data section, whatever calculated member that you design, part of the measure dimension, it will be appeared as a unit in here, like sales units, sales dollars, or anything else that you have. So if you choose to go with parent dimension as measure, you will find the value right in here. If you choose any other dimension, basically you find that calculated member as, an, as a value of a dimension itself. In other words, you will see them in here, not on basically the value on the measure. So you, want them, you wouldn't be part of the measure, it would be part of the dimension itself. So parent dimension box right in here uh, specifies what dimension the calculated member would be a member of. By default, measure will be counted as a dimension here in calculated member and in MDX. I have to make a note in here. Remember that by the time you're designing your dimension, measures are not dimensions. But in MDX, we treat measures as dimension because we would like to refer to some of those measures and perhaps some of the values that come from a measure and calculate them. So that's the only time that we treat measures as a dimension but they are not dimensions. The way that we are referring to it is as a dimension. As you know, the measure dimension has one level, only and only one level, and has all available measures within it. So if I create a calculated member that is part of the measures dimension, it will appear right here on the data section. If I choose a different dimension, then I get the parent member. Please pay attention in here. If I choose the measure, there is no parent member because there's only one level. That's why it's faded. You can't even change that. If I choose any other dimension, then the parent member will be available. Parent member is available in here in order to specify the placement of the calculated member. Where would you like to have it? In other words, would you like to have it on the all? Would you like to have it under this? Where would you like to have that? That's a parent member. That means the immediate parent for this calculated member. Where would it be? Then you got the member name. This is the name that you're referring to, obviously. And it will appear right in here under the calculated members mm, folder. Then you have the middle section. They call it value expression. This is where you enter the MDX expression. If you are familiar with that, you could basically go and type it in. If you're not, you could graphically build that up, which I'm going to show it to you throughout the rest of this demonstration. In the third grid over here, you got three different sections. You got the data list which includes all available dimensions, including the measures. As you see here, you got the description area that shows 
the actual naming convention part of MDX. You could actually learn a lot by just clicking on it. You could see exactly how to refer to some of these values in here and basically learn how to refer to them programmatically. You got the function list, which has a category of all available functions within the MDX. And you could go throughout the categories of available functionalities. Many of these functionalities are related to MDX. Many of them aren't. They are basically, you know, common functions that are available throughout the Excel even. Also, you could add your own, uh, you know, commands. As you see, by clicking on the register button, you could actually add any DLL that has functionalities available for, for your calculations, perhaps. I'm going to demonstrate later on how to do that. And then, of course, you got the, basically, uh, calculation area that you could basically use the calculator in order to include numerical values or basically arithmetic operations in there. Please notice that the measure dimension uh, in the parent dimension is the default. Uh, having the measure dimensions uh, selected in the parent dimension list indicates that the new calculated number will appear part of the measures list right in here. Otherwise, it will appear part of the dimension itself. So let's go and practice with this a little bit. If I go and just type in a value expressions, if I put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for example, uh, if I check that value, you see the syntax will be OK. Uh, when we are talking about the syntax, we're not talking about parsing. This value expression doesn't parse. It just wants to make sure that you have entered the right syntax. So it is your responsibility to understand exactly what member you're going with. Again, this is not a very powerful tool in order to create a member value, but it's better than nothing. So we can actually take advantage of this tool, know some rules and regulation, and create our own formula. So for example, if I go and uh, show you some of the techniques, if you make a mistake, as you see, the color coding shows you that there is an error. As you see, the red uh, color shows that there is a problem. Pay attention to the sensitivity of the characters within the value expression. As you see, my cursor right now blinks outside of the parentheses. And if I go inside, the parentheses becomes bold, as you see. Pay attention to the value expression. The parentheses becomes bold. That means you are there. And as soon as I close my parentheses, the red color changes to black. That means there is no more error available. So the colored red is already available until there is no problem. Also, we could basically go and uh, choose another unit in here. As you see, you got the uh, braces. And braces allow you to combine more than one expression into one unit, very similar to mathematical rules and regulations that you might be familiar with by the time you took some university or high school courses in regard to algebra. You could actually combine more than one value, for example, uh, together. So that way you are making them as one unit. So by the time you're processing it, that would be processed first. Also, this is like a, uh, a specific representation for creating set commands. So later on, we talk about that as well. Also, as far as the calculated member builders, I like to type in USA, for example and I pre press a space. And then, basically from uh, the value in here, I like to type sum. You see, I like to just demonstrate different color coding in here. I mentioned already that red indicates errors. And of course, you have also uh, some sort of a quick tip that shows you what is this function all about. It shows available parameters that you have to pass in. If you see there is a parameter that is shown within the token, that means that's mandatory. You have to specify that token. And then you have a bracket. That's optional. That means you don't have to specify a numeric expression, but you do have to specify a set. If you are going to use sum, then you have to have a set for it. So as you see here, the burgundy color over here, it represents a keyword. It represents a function versus a black that represents a value. So I just wanted to demonstrate these things to you. I could also use another keyword in here, like and. You see the blue it actually shows the operator keyword versus the function keyword. There are more than one color available. And then if I go with the quotation mark, I can represent you know, perhaps a string. That also shows as a red. That doesn't mean it is an error. It's actually a value. is a string value that you can refer to. Now, of course, you could use multiplication, uh, addition, division, and so forth in here. You could combine values. You could actually go through different levels. 
and as you see here it shows the level pay attention to the key this is the key that has been created by the time we created uh, this specific dimension and a level the level itself has a name CEO has one member if I go down you see the uh, Maya for example has its own name you can actually take a look at some of the other uh, in important information regarding the member values in here so this is again referring to the key and referring to the particular properties of it so once again you could refer to the properties available for that a specific level or member in there you could actually go to the member key and realize which one you're referring to as far as the key goes and find a particular uh, member within a level so the description shows you exactly how to work with this I can press or click within the value expression double click on that particular member value and automatically will paste its name in there so you don't have to type it in so the graphical uh, screens in here allow us to you know type in in a fast way so we could basically refer to a particular member variables within our expression as you see if I check it the check itself it goes and evaluates and realizes that there is a syntax error it says the USA sum and hello doesn't make any sense so there are some help available for us we could take advantage of it and then basically we could go from there as you realize in here this is basically referring to the uh, cube that we have been dealing with sales cube well basically each cube can create its own calculated members so in order to create a calculated member the first step here is to go to a cube editor and then of course you could choose a particular level of a particular dimension and you can see available members of that particular level in there the at sign in here or ampersand in here refers to a key in other words I'm referring to the northwest of region level that's the syntax so you don't have to remember all that because the tool is available so you could take advantage of it in the case of hierarchical dimensions you have a time and as you see the icon represents hierarchical values you have different levels per each dimension so you got the cube you got the dimension you got the hierarchy perhaps you see at this point we don't have a hierarchy but you do have a hierarchy in here and then you have a level and then you have a member so that's the hierarchy really if you think about it cube dimension hierarchy level and member so knowing this information in here let's go and basically find some of the values in there for example I like to go and perhaps deal with uh, a specific value part of my calculated numbers in there and type in for example a state and then provide a state dimension as you see here a state dimension also has a level called a state so that's why I have a state dot a state a state dimension a state level that's the name that I've typed in and then of course I can go with ampersand and go with number four let's just go and check this syntax is okay let's go and click OK and as you see in here the new calculated number returns no numerical value that's why it gives me an error so not necessarily every single calculated number that you design refers any specific value back to you if you are going with a major then you have to consider that the calculated number has to return basically a numerical value so you could consider that so let's continue with this demonstration and then of course we get back into this and we talk about it a little bit more so part of this specific chapter so far we have talked about uh, basically qualifying and creating it and working with the calculated member now how do we access the calculated member builder as I talked about before you got to go with the insert menu or you can go with the calculate number button or you could right click on the calculate number folder and then choose new calculate number or you could right click on an existing calculate member and select edit or you could go with the ellipse button of the calculate member value property so if you recall I've already shown it to you in here you can go to the properties that's the value that's the ellipse button you can go back to basically uh, calculate member editor you could go with an insert you could basically go with the icon you could right click in here and say new or you could edit an existing one there are more than one way in order to get into the calculated member builder uh, utility now as far as the topic that so far we have talked about is 
basically uh, the regions that I've already demonstrated. We have the parent dimension, parent member, and member name. As I mentioned earlier, you have the default dimension was major. You could change that and choose also a parent dimension for it. You have an option of selecting parent dimension if you choose any other dimension but majors. So once again, let's point back in here. If you choose majors, there is no parent member. If you choose any other dimension, then you have a choice in order to choose a parent member in there. So that's an option. The parent member doesn't determine the aggregation. So you don't aggregate per parent. However, it indicates the placement of your calculated member. Where would you like to show it? So as far as the aggregation wouldn't make any difference, it's just a matter of how would you like to show it and where would you like to show it. That actually makes a difference in there. So we have already talked about many of these topics in here, and we mentioned that the way that you're referring to a, a specific key is by using the ampersand, and I've already demonstrated those for you. So now let's continue and talk about the rest of this topic. And let's talk about the value expression box. I mentioned that you have the pair matching, automatically becomes bold. You have the color coding. Names are black, functions are maroon, keywords are blue, and text strings are red. The icons that are available, you got the cube, dimension, hierarchy, level, and member. We have already demonstrated those for you. As far as the data list, often appear multiple terms in a dimension, as members of a level or as children of a parent. Also, you could double-click or drag into a value expression box, as we talked about. The names depend on the dimension and level properties. Member names unique, and member keys are unique as well. So, as you see here, once again, these are the data member that we were talking about. You could actually refer to it. You could double-click on it. You could actually drag and drop it, as you see here. So, consider that the key has to be unique, and of course, the value also uh, has to be unique as well. So, as far as the working with calculated members now, let's go and really create one. So, what I'd like to show you is how to calculate an average price. So, in order to do that, I'd like to go and edit my existing calculated member. Let's go and name it something more meaningful. I'll call it average price. Since it's a major, then basically it will appear right here on the data list. So let's go and get rid of this particular value expression. What I'd like to do, I'd like to go and expand my measure and expand the measures level and choose the sales dollar. As you see, the sales dollar is av available in here by double clicking on it. I can check it and as you see, the syntax becomes okay. What I'd like to do, the average price basically is dividing the sales dollars by the sales unit perhaps. So I'm dividing dollar amount by the number of units that have been sold. So as soon as I do that, check it, click OK, and OK, you see that the average price becomes 2.1498. Just in case if you wanted to have a dollar amount in front of it, you can click on an advance and choose the format string and choose currency. And by doing that, automatically the currency will appear. So you could basically create the calculated number and change the format string for it, which is available in here part of the advanced section. If you don't see the property, all you need to do, click on it and choose that. We're going to, of course, get into the detail of these properties later on. So in this demonstration, you saw how to create a calculated measure, calculated member that it will be appeared part of the measure itself. Now, since the demonstration showed you how to do that, let's now talk about calculated members a little bit more. Well, basically, you're creating a calculated member using the MDX expression, as I showed you. MDX expressions can be built using the calculated be member builder. They are being calculated at query time after aggregations. In other words, you don't have the value over there. They will be calculated. So by the time you're referring to that particular calculated member, then the value will be calculated. They refer to other regular or calculated members as well. In other words, you could have a calculated member that uses another calculated member in there part of the expression. You could take advantage of it using MDX expressions. They could also belong to any dimension. You're not forced in order to be part of the same dimension to have a calculated member. They do not increase the cube size or require processing. That's why they are pretty fast. In other words, you could create as many as calculated members. You don't have to waste any time and they don't increase the size of the cube because you're calculating it on the fly. However, just because you're calculating it on the fly 
you might uh, slow down the query interval. That's why, and then, and then uh, at the end of this course, you learn how to create a calculated cell, so you could uh, store it within the cube, so you don't have to really be worried about the time itself. There is a lab in which allows you to go and work with a calculated member. In this specific lab, you are going to create a calculated member, and that will basically covers up this specific course uh, and this chapter. We talked about the role of an MDX. We talked about the MDX member names. We basically talked about calculated member builder, and we learned how to work with calculated members. I'll give you some time to do the lab, and then we're going to move on to the other sections of this course.